Hello there. In the first part of my documentary I showed that the death of Raymond Lemme was not a suicide but a brazen murder of an investigator who was about to publish his findings. Findings that proved that the vote fraud software order placed by former Congressman Thomas Feeney had a link all the way to the top, as high as you can imagine. I showed that from the year 2000, the year Tom Feeney ordered the software hack, the exit poll vote count deviation increased tenfold, and in some cases as high as 16 times, and did so into 2006 at least. One of the states that was crucial for the 2004 election was Ohio, where John Kerry was ahead until about 11.45 p.m. That trend changed dramatically thereafter and favored Bush to a degree that had odds of 1 in over 1 billion, according to experts. In other words, somehow the tabulation was manipulated. According to a declaration of Stephen Spoonamore, an expert in cyber crimes, the answer has been found in a computer network set up that an order of then Ohio Secretary of State Blackwell connected an external computer to the tabulating equipment. Moreover, according to Spoonamore, triad computer technicians had removed hard drives from county tabulators in advance of a recount. The external computer through which the results were routed was located in the basement of an office rented to Smart Tech, a company controlled by Michael Connell. Who is Michael Connell? Mike Connell is, uh, has been named as uh, Carl Rove's computer guru since 2000. Actually, Michael Connell's connection went all the way to the White House, the GOP, the RNC, and the number of government agencies for which he was the IT guru. For that purpose, he had formed and operated a number of companies besides Smart Tech. Here are just a couple of them. Trying to get to the root of an alleged election fraud scheme, Clifford Arnebeck, an Ohio attorney filed suit against Jennifer Brunner, Ohio's current Secretary of State. He subpoenaed Michael Connell to appear for a deposition and bring with him documents, including email correspondence between Karl Rove and Connell. Uh, the lawyers in the case refer to Connell as a high IQ Forrest Gump because he's been on the scene of every dubious election we've had over the last eight years, starting with Florida 2000. Connell moved to quash the subpoena and argued that it would be burdensome to find the documents. The court denied the motion. That of course meant that he had to bring emails which could have been embarrassing to Karl Rove and members of the Bush administration. Some say Connell was about to reveal embarrassing details involving senior members of the Bush administration, including their involvement in destroying incriminating emails and rigging elections. At that time, Connell was working for the McCain campaign. According to information provided to Arnebeck, Connell was threatened by Karl Rove that unless he be the foul guy, his wife would be prosecuted for violation of the lobbying laws. Moreover, there were threats made against Connell's life, which is why Arnebeck got in touch with Attorney General Mukazi and requested protection for his witness. Neither the DOJ, under control of the Bush administration, nor Mukazi did anything. But what's really astonishing here is that Karl Rove could make that threat with such impunity. This shut Connell up. In the meantime, Connell's friends warned him not to use his pipe at Saratoga. Connell himself had the suspicion that some handyman was tampering with his plane. 
True enough, the inevitable happened. Connell used his piper and promptly crashed. 45-year-old Michael Connell died Friday night after his plane crashed into this vacant house near Union Township in Stark County. He crashed some three miles from Akron, Ohio airport. That seemed to have solved Karl Rove's problem, for the moment at least. The fatal plane crash of Michael Connell was certainly untimely. Except that I believe that Connell wasn't entirely unprepared. Rather, it is likely that he gave copies of the emails to a third person, just in case. You see, the problem with the emails is that neither Rove nor anybody else in the White House used the government servers for emails that were confidential or unfit to see the light of day. Therefore, subpoenas to the White House were a waste of time. Rather, Karl Rove had Connell's companies set up a website and server that had the initials of George W but was controlled by the Republican National Committee. The URL is gwb43.com. I tried to access it, but it gave me the finger. Inspector Closo's residence. One moment, please. Just kidding. But I do have an idea. How about I file a criminal complaint for suspicion of murder and conspiracy to commit murder against John Doe's. Of course, that would have to be after the Department of Justice has been taken over by those guys who promised change. Problem may be that the Federal Aviation guys investigating the crash may have tampered with the evidence. Oh well, have fun and have a gorgeous weekend.